Good morning once again and welcome back to my channel. My name is Doris. Now what you have been seeing happening in your life or taking place in your life is because of your lifestyle. It's because of the life that you have been living. It's the cause of the life that you have chosen to live. That is the cause of everything. Your lifestyle is the reason as to why you are experiencing what you are experiencing. You may have been wondering what it is that you have done wrong. You have been wondering what is it that you have not done. Or you have been thinking, where did you miss the mark? You have been trying to make sense of everything but nothing makes sense to you right now you just can't figure out the cause of all that is going on in your life no matter how hard you try to contain the situation things just seem to be getting worse and worse things just seem to be getting out of control and you've been going through every aspect of your life taking inventory of your life trying to understand what is going on you have been trying to figure out if there is anything that you may have missed out on or maybe trying to figure out the cause of all that is taking place in your life but it doesn't matter how much you try to figure it out you just you're just coming out empty you're coming out with anything there is absolutely nothing that you can pinpoint that you think could have triggered or is the source of what you're experiencing there is nothing specifically that you can pinpoint like this is it this is where it all started this is the cause of everything you just there is nothing and yet things are just not adding up in your life it's all gonna make sense to you because it is related to the life that you are living it is related to that lifestyle that you have chosen to live that is the cause of everything that is the trigger of everything that you see happening happening in your life that is the trigger of everything that you see taking place in your life let us pray first before I get, I dwell deeper into this word so that I can bring an understanding of what it is that I'm talking about. Father God, I bless you. I glorify your name. I thank you for this opportunity to share your word. I pray that this word is going to be a blessing. It's going to be an encouragement and a revelation to somebody. Lord, anoint your word even as I release it. And I pray that whoever is going to hear this word, Lord, they shall hear that which you're saying in this hour. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, in the book of Job, chapter 1 and verse, verse 6, it says like this. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them, verse 8. Then the Lord said, to Saturn, have you considered my servant Job? But there is none like him on the face of on the face of the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Verse nine. So Saturn answered the Lord and said, "Does Job fear God for nothing?" Verse eleven. But now stretch out your hand and and touch all that he has, and he will surely cast you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now, I really don't know what Satan went to do when the sons of God came to present themselves before God. Maybe he was just being a busybody. The devil is a troublemaker. He was maybe he came to create drama, just cause chaos. I don't know. But he didn't come to ask for job because it was God who started a conversation with him and started bragging on job. Maybe God knew that the lifestyle job was living was really frustrating the devil. Maybe he knew that the devil had something on job. He knew that the devil was really frustrated with how job was conducting himself and his love for god and his passion for living right for god and god really wanted to rub it on his face he just really wanted to frustrate the devil even more but this must have angered Satan. 
and he thought that if he could get to job maybe he can bring him down and if he attack him he's gonna turn on god and then he the devil Satan, he's the one who is gonna have the last laugh like he it was his way like of getting back to god there is nothing that the devil hates the most like a person who is living a lifestyle of holiness the devil hates someone who is walking in righteousness he's gonna try anything and everything to make you compromise you see it is the lifestyle of holiness that you have chosen to live that has attracted the backlash from the devil he hates it he hates it as long as you can compromise here and there, he has no problem with you. In fact, he doesn't mind even if you don't backslide. As long as you are compromising here and there so that he is able to gain access into your life. But the moment you choose to live a life of holiness, the moment you choose to live a consecrated life unto the Lord, to live a life totally surrendered to the Lord and you are holy, being led by the Holy Spirit, the devil hates that because you are a threat to his kingdom. He can't get access to you. And whatever you do, whatever you say, heaven backs it up and God responds immediately. Job was not even privy to the conversation that transpired before between God and Satan. One day he was living his best life and the next day he was living in hell. Everything and anything that could go wrong went wrong. Adversity after adversity, disaster after disaster. I mean like tragedy after tragedy, loss after loss. He didn't even have time to process anything. It was just one thing after the other. And this may be the situation that you are experiencing. This is the situation that you are dealing with right now. One thing after another. You are not in a position even to process everything. You are literally overwhelmed. And the, the thing is, you cannot even figure out what it is that is going on. You don't understand what is creating all this. And you have been wondering what went wrong. At what point did I miss it? You have been wondering if God is punishing you for something that maybe you have done or maybe you are under God's judgment. And there is nothing so painful as thinking that maybe you have fallen under God's judgment and you don't even know what it is that you have done wrong. It can be so frustrating. You have been repenting over and offer for any sin that you can think of, any sin that you can come up with, any sin that you know, and even the ones that you don't know, for just in case, so that things maybe could line up in your life. It's not about all that. It is about the lifestyle that you have chosen to live, that lifestyle of holiness God is not punishing you. In fact, the Lord is so proud of you. He is actually bragging on you. He is telling the devil, do your worst. This one, this one is mine. This one is sold out for me. This one, you can make this one compromise. Do you know just how frustrated the devil is right now because of that lifestyle of holiness that you are living? Even though he is attacking you, he knows. He knows that he can't do anything to you unless God allows it. He knows that his time is so short. He just has a limited time. It's just a matter of time before the Lord deals with him. He knows that he can never access you. If it's not for God to allow him, he knows that he has limitations. He knows that there are constraints on him as to how far he can go. There is a line that he cannot cross. And this is so frustrating to him. He knows that no matter what he does, it is within what he has been allowed to by God and if he could just have his way he would kill you 
the devil has lost big time in your life. In fact, he he has just ended up revealing to you that he can't have you. Listen, after everything that he's done, after everything that is going on, you are still holding on to God. You are still living that lifestyle of holiness that you have chosen to live. The devil has already lost and he knows it. And also know that Jesus is also interceding for you. It says in the book of Luke 22, 31 to 32, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Your lifestyle, that lifestyle of holiness is tormenting the devil big time. He just can't stand it. Listen, when all is said and done, you remain victorious. Actually, you are living in victory even right now. With all that is going on, with all the attack, with all the backlash, with all the opposition, with all the resistance that you are experiencing, you are living a victorious life. It is victory that you are walking out and this is so frustrating to the devil you have already you see how do i put it you have already put him in his place you have made a stand by living that life of holiness and the devil knows that it is over for him it knows that it is over. There is nothing that he can do. And the good part of it is that he also knows that everything that he has taken from you, what he has stolen, what he has killed, what he has destroyed, he's going to have to restore it seven times. Can you imagine that? So you can imagine, you know, you may think that you are frustrated of what is going on, but he, imagine how much more the devil is frustrated because of you making a stand. Listen, that lifestyle that you have chosen to live, that, that lifestyle of holiness, consecrating yourself unto the Lord, is a life of victory. And the devil is so frustrated with you right now. He is just so mad at you. He just doesn't know what to do with you anymore. He has done his worst and yet you're still there standing, living for God. He hates it. That lifestyle is so pleasing to God. God is bragging on you. God is so proud of you. Keep on keeping on. Hold on right there and God don't give the enemy an inch. It is a beautiful life that you have chosen to live. May the Lord abundantly bless you. I love you so much, but the Lord, he loves you so much more. He loves you than everlasting love. And there is nothing that can separate you from his love, which is in Christ Jesus. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Welcome all my new subscribers. Thank you for liking and sharing. Also, don't forget to like and share this one. And thank you for your comments and your emails. And of course, for your giving. And for all of you who are sending me your prayer request, know that I am praying for you and I'm standing with you in prayer. Shalom.